Hello, my name is Robert Eisler Wonka, and I'm here to give you an idea of uh, what kind of brushes to buy for acrylic paintings. So, to begin with, uh, I'm going to show you a few uh, brushes that I own. Uh, one of them is the, uh, the Jack Richeson series, 7130. I'll put that in a link in the description down below this video. This is the set. It's a lovely little set. It has, um, as you can see, a, a nice thick brush. I think that's about almost an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. And then some uh, pointed sables and a few other wedge type here. Very nice brushes. These are great for small paintings. Anything around 8x10, uh, 12 by 16 around there, maybe the largest you'd go. So around there, that'd be a great little set to have. As you can see, it uh, snaps up a little magnet here, locks it in place, and uh, away you go. Put that in your knapsack and you're off to the races. Now, one of the other types of paint brushes that I have, these ones I selected myself, they're, they're all synthetics, I'll show you that. They're synthetic brushes and it's an array of them. I think the thickest or the widest one is about an inch and a quarter or something like that. And um, they're all synthetic, as I said before. Really good brushes for watercolor or acrylic. And in fact, these are very good acrylic brushes here. Semi-stiff. That's the difference you can tell between a watercolor brush and a acrylic brush is they're a little, the acrylic brushes are a little stiffer. Um, if you want to go on the extreme, you know, an oil paint brush is a hog bristle and it's very stiff. And, uh, and if you go from that to uh, the watercolor brush, which is very soft, you can tell the two extremes, there they are. And in between that is the acrylic brush, which is very nice. Uh, Semi-stiff is what you want because Acrylic paint is a little stiffer than, of course, watercolor. It's not as stiff as oil, but it's stiffer than watercolor. Watercolor is stiff at all, of course. So that's why you want a soft brush. You could still use a soft brush for an acrylic painting. Um, it's just more control. You'll have more control if you have it uh, that way. The other thing I want to show you, um, which I seem to have dropped on the floor, um, is the uh, Masterson uh, palette is what it is, basically acrylic palette. You can get that in the picture. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's got a lid, a little tray. Inside it, I have a, a, a dried up, I uh, haven't used this one in a while. Got a sponge on the inside and a dried up uh, piece of paper with some acrylic paint that is, as I said, dried up. But you would keep that wet, you would of course uh, dampen the uh, the sponge and then that dampens the paper. Uh, the sponges when they're not all <clears throat> wrecked they come in a nice little package like this so you can buy a bunch of those and uh, there's a little bit of description of the type that it is. Uh, these are 12 by 16 so that's a fairly large palette great for the studio maybe not so good for anything you're doing out on the you know if you're if you're doing plein air painting or something like that you might want to have something a little smaller but if you're doing studio work that's a, an excellent uh, an excellent uh, arrangement here is another a picture i'll just prop it up here which gives you an idea of the um, the layers yeah the paper and the sponge in the tray now the cool thing about this particular little uh, palette is is that it'll keep your um, acrylics uh, wet and for weeks on end so uh, that way you don't have to worry about them drying out now you you do have to pay some attention to how long you keep them in there because um, they will mold eventually like it does get moldy in there and one way to mitigate that is to use uh, distilled water rather than tap water but eventually it will mold on you so you you can't keep it there forever but I mean if you're painting you know a painting in you know, let's say one or two weeks you're working on it right then you uh, you can use this palette and you won't have to worry about your paints drying out your oil your acrylics rather and and that's a, a real 
positive thing to be able to have uh, because a lot of times you, you'll be mixing dollops of paint in acrylic and um, you know oftentimes it's not easy to get the same just the exact same color uh, when you're remixing. Acrylics as we know goes on light and dries darker so uh, it's sort of like a moving target when you're trying to match mix and match colors later on can be a little tough. So that's my little story about brushes and um, oh yeah and there's also something else you can do you can get yourself uh, a wider brush if you're painting bigger canvases then um, you might want to get yourself a, a little bit of a wider brush and you don't have to go to the art store to get those you can get those kinds of brushes at a paint store and uh, and they're and they're pretty good this is a two incher but you can get a one inch and a one a half inch and these are great brushes for applying paint um, uh, to a larger canvas. And then, of course, the other ones. I will uh, put together a photo image that I will uh, uh, have these all listed for you so you can tell what they are and um, how big they are. That will give you a pretty good idea. And then from there, um, I won't link anything in any description there because you can go to an art store and, um, and and look for brushes like that. The image that I'm about to show you, uh, if you have an iPhone, you can, you can actually do a screenshot of it and then you can use that as a guide. Uh, and it'll have like the sizes on it. So anyways, that's, that's my little story for today. I hope that it was some help when it comes to picking out brushes and that palette should really give you uh, a leg up on, uh, on your painting in the studio.